Hi there, my name's Catherine and this is So Much Sewing. This is a vlog all about sewing. It's all about patterns and fabrics and how I mash the two together and how I dress this crazy body of mine and just all things to do with sewing. So if you love sewing as much as I do, even as half as much or as quarter as much as I do, I hope you will stick around and see what I have to say. And if you haven't subscribed already, I hope that you will do so and click the notification bell and do all those things that we YouTubers always ask you to do. This aspect in my room is different from what you normally see. I'm chasing the light today. It's the middle of winter and it's about five o'clock at night and the sun, well, I'm not sure we've had any sun today at all actually. It's quite murky out there. So I've got an overhead light on here. It's actually a light my husband installed. My mirror is there. This is my dressing room where I get ready. All my clothes are in that wardrobe over there. And this is where I get ready. My mirror's here. And so my husband put a, a light up here to help me put my makeup on because it's quite a dark room. Um, so I've got that overhead light on and there's a window behind me, well in front of me, behind you. So hopefully there's enough light. I hope it works out. So fingers crossed. Today I just wanted to catch you up on a couple of items that I made. I uh, put a video out a couple of weeks ago saying that there are three things on my make list and that you would see them on this channel made up and finished very very soon so I'm making good on that promise. There's two items I'm going to talk about here today. One of them is what I'm wearing and that is the Cuddle Up Cardigan by Trish Newbery. So Trish Newbery is a New Zealand sewing pattern designer and she has a lot, a lot of patterns in her portfolio. So I'll just pop a couple up here as I'm chatting to you, I suppose, so you can see the types of things that she has. She has quite a sort of a, um, I would call it a, quite a funky aesthetic. Some, her, some of her designs are a little bit different, but she has some very classic designs there as well. And there really probably is something there for everybody, women that is. Does she do children? Actually, I don't know. I'm sorry if she does children or not. I haven't seen any men's patterns, um, but I'll let you know down here whether there are any children's and men's patterns. But anyway, just have a look, little look at a couple of her designs as we are chatting. But I wanted to talk to you about the Cuddle Up cardigan. I have obviously talked to you about this before. It... Um, I love it. I love it. I have worn it a lot since I made it. That is the cuddle up there. Got some interesting design lines on it. Um, the shoulder seam here. There's no, it all, actually all comes from the back. You can see it all comes from the back and then it wraps around. And that's where it joins to the front here. These are the pieces. That's the back. And there is just the sleeves. These are the sleeves and this is these are the fronts here. So this shoulder seam here comes down and wraps along the front. Now hopefully I'll be able to make that clear to you. If I this is it here. Look at that great shape to it. I love this. I appreciate it might not be for everybody, but I love this drapey, cocoony design. And here is that seam I was talking to you about. It just comes all the way over here and you sew it there. So that's your front piece there. And there's a, a separate band and the sleeves, here's the seam here. Oh, you can see my suitcase in the background. You'll remember I went to Dunedin over the weekend where it was very, very cold and where I did wear this. Um, so yeah, I mean, look at that drape. 
I used my cover stitch on all the hems and it's just made such a beautiful job of it. Looks amazing. I just have this on with a singlet, knit singlet dress or tank dress that I've had for a long time. In fact, I did a video on this about how I altered it to suit my new shape. Um, but that's just a, a viscose jersey knit dress and this is a um, ready to wear merino base layer for warmth. The only thing that didn't go quite 100% perfectly was these little bits here. Can you see how they're sort of a little bit pointy and sticking out? That is my error. When you attach the front to the shoulder here, the forward shoulder, what you do, and I hope I can explain this properly, is as you're sewing that seam, this, which is folded over and overlocked, before you get to that point, that's just loose. And so as you are sewing that seam together, you wrap this piece around to the other side and then sew it into place. And then you just sort of poke it out, turn it and flip it out again. So this was over like that. And you flip it out again and then sew it down. So I obviously didn't fold that over enough when I was making that seam. And so it's just left these little pointy bits here, which, you know, I'm not totally happy with, but does it ruin my enjoyment of this cardigan? No. Would I prefer they weren't like that? Yes, but you know, hey, this is the first time I made it. Uh, the next time I make it, I will do a better job and these little po pokey bits here won't be there. Now, the fabric I use, and I've written it down, I've made some notes so that I tell you all the correct information. Uh, my fabric is, it's actually got a really high polyester content. And I know I keep banging on about how I only wear natural fibers, but I'm sort of relaxing that a little bit. The last uh, little few months, I have relaxed that policy somewhat, and I have been wearing some man-made fibers. I think it's just a lot easier um, to accept over the winter months where it's a lot cooler. I do like my natural fibers in the summertime when you need to be comfortable and you need your clothing to breathe, but I'm not at all mad about man-made fibers in my some of my winter wear, especially top layers like this. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with that. But this is 64% polyester, 20% cotton, 13.5% viscose, kind of strange, and 2.5% spandex. And I got this fabric from Spotlight. I mentioned to you a while ago, Spotlight had a big sale on. So this was a really good price. But it just, it, I mean, there's a lot of polyester in it and it's cotton rather than wool, but it just feels very, very snugly. I don't know if you can see there's texture to it which feels a little bit brushed and then there's a very almost like well it's a very knitted you can see the sort of pearl side of the fabric there and it's yeah just got a lovely brushed feel to it and it is so so snugly it's a great extra layer and it is very warm so as I said before I did wear this in Dunedin when I went down over the weekend. It was very, very chilly and it was a bit of a shock to start with, but it was, you know, I acclimatized very quickly. The house was lovely and warm. Of course, outside it was chilly. So this was a lovely extra layer that I did wear. Um, and I wore this at night if it got a little bit chilly as well. So I'm so in love with this cardigan. I love the slim fitting sleeves there but with the sort of bat wing shape there to give you that lovely drapey look. And um, this is definitely a pattern that I'll make again. I'm not sure that I need another one right now um, because this is just so versatile, but I'll make another one of these. Um, I wanted to mention that the instructions 
clearly say that you should have a fabric that has at least 70% stretch for the neckband. Um, this does have a lot of great stretch, or it must be the other way. It does have some really great stretch and it, it is more than 70%, so that was fine. But I found that when I was making this, I didn't really need all that stretch. There wasn't a lot of stretch in putting the, the band onto the back neck area. So I think you could get away with a less than 70% stretch in your um, fabric. And also, actually one of my viewers said, and I'll look back and I'll find her name and I'll pop it down here, and as she said, you know, if your fabric isn't 70%, um, got a 70% stretch in it, you can just cut that band a little bit longer to make sure that it does fit. As far as the instructions go, it was a little bit head scratchy at times, especially when we were folding this back to sew that into place. Um, but the mitered corners here were very simple. Look at that. I'm proud of that. Isn't that a beautiful, sharp, mitered corner, hey? So that was easy to sew. Um, but I think in general it's probably not a beginner pattern. There are some things to get your head around, the mitered corners and um, this little bit here. There is a sew-along. I believe Trish Newbury has a sew-along for if not all of her sewing patterns then an awful lot of them so they're on YouTube so check her out I will link her below um, I did look at her um, video sew along for making this which did help in the making one thing I would say though is the fabric she was using was very very dark as well it was a dark sort of bottly green type color and so it was hard to see the detail so while it was very helpful to see the sew along, I sort of did have to kind of go back and forth between the sew along and the instructions and just kind of figure it out using my own knowledge as well. So that's the only thing I would say, but there's not a negative. You know, we like a challenge sometimes, don't we, when we're sewing. And so it was, without being a frustrating sew, um, challenge, it was a bit of a challenge. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely going to be making more Trish Newbery patterns because she's a New Zealand pattern designer and I would like to support her for one reason but also because I love her designs she's a very funky mama and has got some great designs um, and in fact the delightful dress which I've spoken to you about is another one that's on my list of plans for coming up very very soon but I'll tell you what my list is actually growing and growing a few months ago I just was paralyzed not knowing what to do I didn't know what to make but at the moment I've got so many plans stacking up I just don't know when I'm going to find time to make them all so what else um, I made a size 2XL I think yes I made a size 2XL the body measurements for the 2XL uh, were listed as 110 centimeters and I'm 109 at the moment so that was pretty bang on perfect. The hip measurement for the size 2XL is 123 centimeters and mine is 114 I think. So a little larger than my hip measurement but hey I don't mind a little bit of extra swoosh around my hips um, and this is such a you know drapey cocoony style that a little bit of extra swoosh around here is perfect. So there it is again, I love that shape and I'm really super happy with it. I hope you like it too. This is the other item I've made that I wanted to talk to you about and I'm very, very on the fence about this. In fact, I'm kind of headed over the fence. I think I might be on the other side of the fence about this. This is a lovely wool that I purchased from Drapers here in New Zealand. I've talked about this before, my sister bought the same fabric and she was making a top which she has made and it was very successful. She wore it away to the to our weekend away and um, I was very proud of her. The make was fantastic. Uh, this fabric 
does fray quite a bit and she doesn't have an overlocker so she did have trouble finishing the seams that frayed like a bugger so I suggested that she just use a wide but narrow zigzag um, and that seemed to help but um, yeah it, the I mean I know Oh, and also the other thing she said is that it stretched as she was sewing it and she doesn't have a walking foot. So the fact that she was having that trouble actually helped me out. Sorry, Sarah, um, but that helped me out because I used my walking foot to sew this and um, I used my overlocker, of course, to finish the seams. And so I, I enjoyed working with the fabric itself. It was really lovely to work with. Um, I'd like to say that this is a really good quality, but to be honest, there are some quite a few sort of um, little knotty things in here. They look like you could just pick them off, and, and a lot of them you could just pick off, but a lot of them are like knots in, in the weave. So I don't know about the quality of this one, to be honest, but it feels fantastic. It feels so nice to wear. And it was, I found it nice to work with because I had the right equipment. I had the walking foot and I had the overlocker. But in any case, this is the field address by Merchant and Mills. And I have made this dress before, um, before I lost my weight and before I started this YouTube channel. And at that time, I made, I think it was a 22 bust and a 26 hip. And that fitted me perfectly at the time, I, you know, and I loved that dress. I was very upset when it no longer fit me, even though I was very happy that it no longer fit me. I was upset that I couldn't wear it. So I was keen to try it again. But this pattern that I have here is from a size 20 to a 28. And that's too large for me. So what I thought I would do is I would try grading it down to a size 18. So I looked at the pattern pieces and I saw the difference between the size 20 and the 22 and the size 22 and the 24. And so, and it varied quite a lot. It was um, six millimeters in places. It was um, a centimeter in other places. And it was about three millimeters in other places around the neck and, and other places. So wherever, I could see, you know, the lines between the size 20 and the 22 and the 22 and the 24. I just took that same difference and made the top smaller, made the dress smaller. I, I believed I was making it into a size 18. And so I think that's what I actually did. I did grade it out, you know, uh, to a size 18. So I think I got it correct in theory. Uh, but when I went to put it on, it was huge on me. So, so large. Um, this neckline is quite large. I th from memory, I think it is quite a wide neck anyway. But um, it was very wide here. Um, and it just was huge on me. So I did take it in. I took it in under the arms here. And I also took it in down the sides. And I still wasn't really happy with the fit, so I took it up because it was quite swampy on me, so I've made it quite short now. I'm actually sitting down on it very gingerly because the hem is just pinned into place. So I'm hoping that I don't accidentally stab myself. So I, I thought I would see what you guys think. I'll stand up and show you how it looks. Here it is, uh, and I'm just undecided. I like a shift dress because I think it suits my frame, my body shape, but I don't know, and I'm looking in the mirror over here, sorry, as I'm talking to you. Maybe it's not so bad as I, I thought. It just seems to be, as I say, I like a shift dress. It's actually got a slight A-line to it. But I just feel, I don't know, is it too shapeless on me? I did take in a lot from under here and a lot from the sides. I, I think if it was a more drapey fabric that it would have been better, I would have kept because it was very A-line. Did that give you an idea 
Um, let me know what you think. I ha actually have got a terrible brow on today. This is my, I've been working <laughs> from home and this is my working from home brow. I don't think it gives me any shape. It's just, you know, something to wear while my good brows are in the wash. So I know that doesn't do much for the shape. It really actually does make a huge difference. I'm sure we all know that. Foundation wear, bras and underwear actually make a huge difference to how our clothing looks on us. But yeah, tell me what you think. Like I say, I just love the feel of this. It's, you know, I think it's 80% wool and 90% nylon. No, 80% <laughs> wool and 20% nylon. Uh, so snuggly, 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 lovely to wear. I've got it, I've got nothing on underneath and it's not itching me. Um, I love this design. It's got shoulder darts here for the shaping. Bust darts here. I lengthened the sleeve. Um, and I really thought a size 18 would fit me. So whether I messed up the grading down to a size 18, I mean, that's entirely possible. I might have messed it up, but I really thought I was meticulous. I really thought I did it correctly. I took my time and I really feel like I did do it correctly. So, uh, so I'm wondering if maybe this is a large fitting dress. I'm not sure because... Um, if I look at the Merchant and Mills measurements for this dress, it says that for a size 18, the finished garment measurement is 123 centimetres. So with my bust of 109 centimetres, that would seem to be, you know, maybe a little bit too much ease, I suppose. The size 16 finished bust measurement is 118 centimetres, so maybe that's a better fit for me, a size 16. But we all know me and my spreading middle, I need more room at the hip, so perhaps what I should do going forward, making this again, is make a size 16 at the bust, because that gives me 9 centimetres ease which is, what's that, is that two inches? That might be two inches, I'll figure it out, pop it down here, but I feel like nine centimeters ease is enough for the bust, but the hips for a size 16 are 123 centimeters and mine are about 115, so I don't think that will cut the mustard with my incredible expanding belly. So I will probably grade up to a size 18 at the hips, which is 128 centimetres. So I think that's what I'll do. I will need to buy the next size down. Um, but I think it's worth doing because I remember just loving this dress so much. I made it out of a black, sort of self-checked, very fine cotton wool gauze, which I do have more of that fabric. I loved it so much I purchased some more. So... You will see that coming your way one day in the not too distant future because it's a wintry fabric and I will hopefully get that made up. But anyway, I feel like I'm waffling quite a lot. So upshot is next time I make it, probably make a size 16 at the bust and an 18 at the hip and that's probably going to be a better fit for me. So that's about it from me for this week. So let me know what you thought about how this looked on me. I'm just not feeling it. I might, I've got some more of this fabric, so I might just cut it up and do something else with it. But but your feedback would be, be very much appreciated. Um, so there we go. So hopefully that's a little short video from me today. And um, I look forward to seeing you again. I hope that you are well and happy and I hope you've had plenty of time for sewing and making up those gorgeous items. I know half my viewers are actually in the summer months so please excuse my wintry makes but you know maybe you can sort of um, if you hadn't seen the cuddle up cardigan before or the field address maybe you can just pop it away in the old memory banks and sort of think about it again once winter starts drawing near. But this actually field address is fantastic, made up in linen. So it is entirely uh, summer appropriate for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere. Anyway, that's me. I'm going now. 
and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.